Welcome. Okay. All right, we'll call the meeting to order at 7.30, July 9, 2019, the Hopkinton Conservation <coughs> Commission. Uh, Don, do we have any documents that we need to sign? No, you signed the, uh, the RDA the and the, you did a signature page meeting. at the last meeting. You had um, a couple new um, uh, applications. One of them is going to be on tonight. The other two will I'll, uh, probably be for the next meeting. Okay. So Borrego Solar, Zero Wood Street. Yeah, so that's a solar be up, farm. Yeah, we're gearing up. Um, that came in Wednesday, the day before um, um, Fourth of July. Okay. So we're still doing an intake. Which end is Zero Wood Street? Is that on the West Oh, it's, uh, it's down in uh, Woodville. It's um, off of Mechanic Street, which is like a private road, and uh, the parcel. The parcel straddles 495. Okay, but they're only gotcha. going to do. Yeah, so it's down they're, the only, they're only going to do, I think, west of, of 495. Got it. You got so that. Up, it's right. a landlocked. Come on, without the, without the without mechanic, it. it's like uh, it's not even a right away. Can it's you? Way, you know, can you it's kind of an way. Apple? Okay. I'm probably an right. Apple monitor. Okay, the draft so minutes for June 4th. Did everyone get a chance to look at those? June 4th minutes. Yes. Any comments? No. Nope. We can get a motion to approve those minutes, please. So moved. And a second. No, a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? Yeah. Okay. MG Kane Properties request to donate yeah. a parcel to the commission. Where is that? So I saw Mr. Mieri's email on that, Don. Right. I didn't know if you guys would have enough time to, to look at that. Um, I just got the, he sent it um, Wednesday after the town hall closed. So right. I don't know if you guys wanted more time to, to look at that, table it to the to the next meeting. Yeah, why don't we do that? Um, I read through it um, kind of quickly. You know, my initial thought is maybe we try to get like Halt or someone else to, um, you know, take custody of the project rather than the commission right. since we don't have the funds to do the maintenance and stewardship. Um, but why don't we take a closer look at it and we can table it till the next meeting. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll email that response out to um, all the members. Okay, thank if you. If I haven't done it already. Trails Coordination and Management Committee discuss trail crossings. Mr. Lagoy, step right up. Good evening. Good evening. So as part of our charge with the, uh, by the selectmen, one of the things we're supposed to do is start putting together standards for trails in town um, and then also work with, with other committees. So I thought this was a good time to kind of introduce this, the committee and then also start talking about the process a little bit. Okay. Um, I actually, in our sort of, the, the Selectman gave us about 11 charges or so, and so we kind of prioritized this actually fairly low down the, the list. But as I've been running around lately, and particularly this spring and last fall with all the rain that we've had, um, there's a lot of trails out there that are borderline impassable or have big wet areas in the middle mm -hmm. um, where a boardwalk might be useful. And that, I was going to bring in some pictures of them, but I'm sure you've all seen them if you've been on trails or especially this this spring like I say there's I just ran on one over along around Lake Whitehall and people have put sticks and they've been putting sticks in there for years right so you can kind of walk on them but it's on the ideal. west side but it, it's like it really could use a boardwalk right right um, which got me thinking that it'd be nice to have a standard approach so you know do we need to come to you guys for every one of those crossings which I think would be pretty onerous for all of us how do we maybe have, a, you know, make sure you guys are in the loop, make sure we do what's right, but at the same time aren't putting too much of a burden on us, on the town mm -hmm. as a whole. So the idea tonight was just kind of start talking about that process and ideally kind of get some parameters from you. I mean, I think at the end of the day, we're going to have to put together some draft guidance, which we'd then share with you folks to, to look at and say, yeah, okay, this looks good. Nah, that, that doesn't, you know, we, we need you to come in front of us for that kind of work. Right. Um, so, can I just add to ahead. that? Um, there are some 
there is some work and there are some crossings that have been um, okay. not a filing, right? So we've had various people in, they want to do a minor Scouts. crossing. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, yeah. asked Don, notified Don. I don't think, well, yeah, they, they these are waiver requests. A, these are a, waiver a, requests, right? Isn't a, yeah, a request right. for minor project exemption. You guys look at it on a case by case basis. And right. I think it, it's so, warranted. And then you go on up from that. Um, which some crossings are required. So is there, you know, we, can we say anything about the type of crossing that would generally, we, that where TCMC would ask for a minor project exemption? That is something at grade, just, uh, you know, no piers, just a log or wooden crossing that's bank to bank, like that kind of thing. Um, is it a matter of the size of it, what the, mm. length, the width of the crossing is, the length of the bridge? Are those, any of those things factors so that we can keep an eye on those things? And, right. and, and yeah. when we're looking at things and just know, you know what I'm, I don't speak for Peter, but and, and then the people. And then the other I, issue along those same lines, again, it, and, and the idea of this meeting is just kind of to start the ball rolling and start everyone thinking about this. Right. right. I, in running out in Western Mass, there was one bridge in particular, which is like two by three separated by, a, by about a three inch gap, which you know, they may, they may have done it because they didn't want to drag as much lumber down into the woods. It's fairly down, far down in the woods, but in terms of letting light in, right? You know, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Acton has bridge guidance. You know, and I I actually looked to see if there was any sort of standards for leaving a gap. And I don't know if you've seen anything, Matt, but I couldn't find anything. Yeah, I don't know. I've never seen anything too standardized. Really. No. No, I mean, like I say, Acton has guidance on bridge construction and boardwalk construction, which is which is pretty good. And we probably incorporate anything we put together. Yeah. But that gap thing was something that I said, boy, that that makes a lot of sense in terms of what I think is what I've heard from you guys as a concern. Sometime you put a bridge in, and all of a sudden you've created this dark space in the middle. You know, especially in in open areas, right. it becomes an issue. And I saw the um, townwide trail maintenance. Um, right the document that the, Reading put together yeah. the town of Reading and that seemed to make sense to me um, I think my sense is, is that if it's a small bridge you know and I think we'd have to talk about this as a commission so and Don maybe we most can talk. Of the, most of like the scout bridges are going from like bank to bank yeah, right, over exactly. the stream there's really not much vegetation that they're gonna they're gonna kill so right. it really hasn't been a, but a right. point and but when you start getting like boardwalks that are going across marshes yeah or that's like a, that, right. yeah then you're, you're that's getting the into simplest, vegetation right? so yeah, that's the simplest know? bridge right and there i don't know how many of those you can't quantify any of it i don't think right now oh. uh, but that's the simplest and that would generally be a minor project exemption right but then anything that you know makes it fixed or <laughs> on piers or any kind of support you know that that changes things right yeah usually uh, yeah these yeah. are just like yeah just so uh, bridges that are just resting you know maybe on they might yeah, right. be a little little you know concrete pad yeah right exactly you have yeah, some you know, kind of footing like a, but it's a yeah removable just a footing, footing but it's yeah exactly it's so not a there's place well, like one at right. very acres that's mm. i think on minor footing but we've had to put it back a couple of times because it floods and gets taken down around the corner um, yeah so my sense is like the boardwalks probably that would need to come before us formally but if we're talking about a eight foot or a ten foot span where it's a couple mm -hmm. four by fours just crossing you know bank to bank and then like you said you have just um, you know lateral boards that are spaced mm -hmm. I think that might be something the Commission could possibly well, do a town-wide maintenance or yeah I mean if and I guess you'd want to look at it if you if you think because it is you know in wetland I don't because I saw he was saying like that town yeah. did it did an order of conditions so you do you'd sort of like I think what you'd want to do is like what the town did for the dam you know like they have to operate the dam every year right and you don't want to every five years come and file a new NOI to run your dam so what you did was you said all right file the NOI come up with a an operation and maintenance manual right. standards right exactly so then you had how you'd operate it going forward so then when you go to close out you have it as an ongoing condition so you can still issue them a certificate of compliance and you can still do the, the drawdowns via the manual that's continuing you do the same thing here you'd say all right maybe one one order of conditions for and then you'd have a manual 
you know, that would sort of... As it, long as you're doing these but, things. As long as you're doing these well, things. In the manual, you can say... Right, and specifications. And then you caveat in the manual. And in case there's unique, you know, right. something we can't foresee, a design that we can't foresee, right. you leave an opening for that, you know, so yeah. you guys have some flexibility. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I'd like to kind of have it as sort of, I guess, ultimately four categories. You know, a big bridge, NOI. You know, something that's we think is in buffer zone, RDA, so sort of the standard things. Then the scout bridge type, you know, simple. if we're going to do this, we'll write you a letter. And then there's going to be things like simple maintenance. You know, a, a tree branch is going out in there, nobody's cleared that, and now it's over two inches. We're just going to go clip it. We don't need to come before you guys to do that. A tree's falling down across the trail. Again, yeah. we're working in you know, we don't need to come before you do it. We just need to do it. Yeah, and obviously, the manual, if there's any questions, yeah. yeah. So that that can all be put in the manual. So I yeah. think that would be the way to go. And then right. obviously, if there are questions, we can just go to Don and and take and bounce it to you guys. If right, yeah. It's and the other clear. analog, Don, I think, is like Plus, the town yeah, line I want, maintenance. I want that too, so. right. W does. That was an RDA because it was it was really kind of buffer zone, buffer zone. stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. except for the that's right. I guess the, the but the culverts were. But that stuff sounds like all those uh, activities, the sort of maintenance um, activities, like yeah. removing trees and stuff, are, yeah. could be covered by the. And the DPW one the NOI. Was example is stuff that already exists. Right. You know, right. then they had to go in and maintain it. Like cleaning up catch be, bases. I don't know. This would be new stuff. But that would be new. It's a little, so you'd, probably little want to do it as, you'd probably want to do it as an NOI. Because yeah, we're still maintaining, we're going to have to right. maintain trails. So, yeah. you know, every year we're going to come in and. Right. Yeah. And would it make sense to have. One NOI for the bridges and one for uh, maintenance. We can do them as all one, right? I Under one. I think we can roll it all into one. Yeah. But have two components, which would be bridge. It's basically a trail standard maintenance for and other maintenance issues, right? Yeah. And we'll yeah, spell in out resource areas, right? What? Yeah. The parameters are, and you know, when it goes to an NOI, when it goes to RDA, right. when it. Yeah. You know. Okay. Good. So I think well, we can. Well, next I think we can Hopefully, you don't have to file one NOI. Yes. Yeah. Well, no, but uh, what I'm thinking is there's then going then, to be, well, no, no. say, it's, a unless particular a bridge that's, you know, in wetlands, and there's going to, you know, I can think of one place where we, we may actually have to work in the wetlands in that case. So in a situation like that, that would be a normal NOI. A separate. That wouldn't NOI. be covered. I wouldn't cover that under separate the standard filing. thing. That would be a separate filing. Right. Okay. Its own. You know, let you it, might it, identify that in the manual that says what you exceed. Yeah, yeah we threshold. know. I mean, obviously, right. it's not covered in this manual. This right. Control. And say yeah. if you have vehicles that you need. So I will. Uh, so in, that might be a different. Uh, yeah. I was a member right. of that committee. <laughs> threshold or something. Um, I, you know, tell them whatever I can, right? But, but um, then yes, done, right? So, and that's something. Yep. Something to commit. Okay, so I All think, right, you know, this will be an ongoing right. discussion. I think, um, you know, we can work with you in drafting mm -hmm. something um, that will make it easier to conduct the maintenance and the minor bridge construction, that type of thing, so you don't have to come yeah. before us every time. Yeah, I'm planning on using that Redding um, one because it's there and looked fairly reasonable. I'd heard about it from other people before. But so, if, you know, if you guys go th and going through that or – You've got a copy, and Don has a copy, so you can get it from him. But if, if anyone if anyone wants to take the time to go through it, and has any questions or concerns or issues, you know, I'd love to hear that before we okay finalize anything. Yeah, I'll go through it. I read through it briefly. I'll go through right. it in more detail and then yeah. send comments to you and Don, and uh, we can work off of that into Jim. Yep. Like committee. Uh, yeah, that'd so. be great. Okay. All right. All right. right. Yep. Can I just, just out yep. of curiosity, will you have a map or an inventory or of anything yeah. as these go in? Of you know, where you put yeah, we're bridges um, in? we're actually on the committee. Sort of the first things we are we are prioritizing is putting a, a list of trails together. Mm -hmm. You know, it seemed like a reasonable <laughs> idea yeah. to know what the trails are in town. Um, town property where trails could go or are currently. And then also a map that ties so, uh, ideally all that together. So mm -hmm. we'll show town property and we'll show trails on it. So then any of this work that's being done could easily be identified on that on okay. that map. Yeah. You know, it'll also include halt owned, SVT owned properties. Right. And, and, and DCR for that matter, yes. right? And yeah. DCR property. Yeah, I mean that, that one so DCR the entire town sure is one that's been there for I mean as long as I've yeah. been running around Lake Whitehall, which is 
longer than I care to think. <laughs> but uh, that and it needs to be fixed, and it's been you know in need of fixing for yeah, twenty right. something years. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. That All right. Sounds good. Thank you for Thanks, uh, Thank working you. on that. We appreciate yep. it. Yep. Peter, just one you. quick thing. Uh, yep. You might want to check out the town of Needham has a trails master plan. That might be a good oh. kind of boilerplate thing. Great. Nice. Just something to look at. That's Great. available on the Thanks. website. Thanks. Yeah, that's, you know. I think Wellesley does, too, if you want a third one. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. <laughs> More the merrier. Absolutely. Yeah, because they're sometimes hard to find. You know, you got to get people. Yeah, you got to go, each, you. You gotta go right. each one, each town. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. See you soon. Okay, Marusa T2 Peter Porcano Drive. This is a notice of intent to install a seasonal dock. The Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, July 9th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. at the Hopkinton Senior Center, 28 Mayhew Street, to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent filed by Heather Marusa to construct a seasonal dock with associated site work. The location is 2 Peter Pocoro Drive, assesses map R25, block 246, lot 0. Welcome back. Yes, thank you for having me back. Um, first of all, I'll open up with giving Mr. McAdam my green cards. Um, here is the plan. I don't have an easel, so any easel I have would be covered in paint and chalk and kits, but um, upon reading Mr. Barrell's letter, I did show the mitigation area here and where I'm proposing to put two shrubs um, as mitigation for the dock. This is the approximate location. It will all be in land underwater, 50 square feet. Mitigation, that hatched area over there is approximately 113 square feet, okay. uh, plus the two shrubs. I'm gonna hand seed it, so I'm assuming that that seed is actually going to go upslope a little bit too. Okay. And that area is pretty wet. It should take seed. Pretty well. Thank you. All right. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, everything's going to be hand done. We'll build it up in the garage. We'll bring it down ourselves. No machines will be stored in the buffer zone. They're not now, so they won't be then. Okay. Um, it's pretty straightforward. We were thinking we will put it in early April and pull it end of November unless weather is terrible and it's a shorter span than that. Okay. And I think one of the other comments was just re-identifying that as a seasonal dock as opposed to temporary, Matt? Yeah, just seasonal meaning removable. Right. Right. Yes. yes. Comes out. Just the FLC. Yeah. Because otherwise it would be perpetually uh, temporary. <laughs> that doesn't make much sense. Right, <laughs> yeah, that would just, so that the approval would yeah. be sort of every year as opposed to just somebody read it as once. You would oh, want that. yeah. <laughs> I don't I'll see how it goes. Yeah, that would be tough. Um, and I have another, I uh, marked up another one of these. For us? Yes. For Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. And then I think the only other comment that hasn't been addressed was the lawn trimming in the yep, buffer zone. Yep, I can zone. pull that back. Okay. Be happy to Perfect. Pull that back. Um, number one B, the uh, glossy buckthorn. Mm hmm. There is a lot of it, and I'm happy to go in there. My friend has an uprooter. I'm happy to go in there and try to attack it as best I can. Okay. What I've been using for the bittersweet, because it was literally 100 feet in the air, I've just been using um, like an electric pulse and mm. just going after it okay. as much as I can. It was yeah. climbing. I mean, it was trying to strangle a rock. It was this big around. Yeah. It, there's, you know, there's only so much you can do, but um, I've been trying to get rid of it. Um, that's more like up in here though that I've, yeah that's the rock it was trying to strangle so that's more up in here um but i can i'll try to get down there and get into the buckthorn wherever it exists okay um, i don't know do you have does anybody have a preference about shrub plantings as thinking button bush or blueberry is that fine that works for me whatever uh yeah i guess do you, i mean i guess the the button bush, if you're going to put it like right in the bank or almost even in the water, I think will be fine. If it's going yeah. to be up on that slope, then I would probably just go with the blueberry. Okay. I was going to try to get it near the dock, sort of to mitigate where I am. Um, but we also have a beaver who likes to maintain his yard, so I'll have to cage. I'll have to cage it and see what I can do about him because he's very active. He's probably going to sit it's on too that. Too bad dock. he doesn't like the buck phone. 
Oh, he's so biggie. <laughs> but he doesn't like the Canadian geese, and we call him the attack beaver because if they land on a rock, he'll attack them and they run away. And oh. so he keeps oh, the geese away. Which is no, good. he's great. He's really fun to watch. And um, he and his other friend have little dates to eat sticks on rocks and stuff. They're very cute. I wonder what a beaver dam goes for in town. <laughs> oh, what? <never> <laughs> Okay, I think, uh, any other comments, Matt? I think that covers just oh, about everything, right? I had a comment, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, number four, uh, litter. I meant like trash or rubbish, not leaf litter. I don't take leaf litter. Okay, all right, I was, yeah. wasn't clear on that. No, uh, yeah, that makes sense. I should have used a different word. And then you're not proposing erosion controls, is that right? No, they okay. just didn't take them off my plan. Okay. Those were there for when we had the barn on here as well, but we took that off to do RDA and stuff. Okay, questions or comments from the commission? This is pretty straightforward. If I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent with standard conditions. So moved. And the conditions noted during the discussion. And a second, please. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And opposed? All right. Thank you for putting that plan together, by the way. That's more professionally done than a lot of the companies that come in here. So, <laughs> well, as a resident, I was pretty impressed I used to by work that. For a company that did this, and actually, I was like, "Why don't I have CAD? And why don't I have a print room?" And I was <laughs> all well, mad because I was spoiled by what I used. To do. Old it'd be, school. You'd be surprised at some of the uh, plans that come in. Oh, well, thank else. you. I mean, I I had something to do with that. I marked it up. Okay. But thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Good Appreciate luck. It. The Joya, 145 Spring Street. This is a notice of intent to construct the single family home. Oh, I gave it to you. Oh, you gave it to me. Right. Thank you. Hopkins and Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, July 9th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. at the Hopkins and Senior Center, 28 Mayhew Street. If you hear all persons interested in a notice of intent filed by Diana DeJoya, De is that correct? To construct a single family house with associated site work. The location is 145 Spring Street, Susses Map, R15, Block 19, Lot 1. <coughs> Are you guys the joyous? Good evening. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Mark Allen Allen Engineering, I yep. apologize. I, I knew you, Mark. Yeah, Diana is the daughter of Suzanne, brother of Kevin. So, okay. the little bit of confusion, I think, in the letters will. Well, she started all this for me because I was in North Carolina. <coughs> So the land's always she been started the land. everything. Okay, well, <laughs> welcome. Yeah. So Suzanne and Kevin <clears throat> Lyford here. They previously owned about 27 acres around this five acres uh, of property. Uh, and the five acres of property, uh, they split out <clears throat> uh, uh, the existing farmhouse to the left and uh, created a new lot about a year ago through the planning board. Uh, and over the last year, it's just kind of been off and on, off and on, off and on. And now uh, momentum has gained, and they want to uh, build uh, the family house next door. Okay. So we had had the wetlands flagged, uh, highlighted in yellow here, um, by Goddard Associates about a year and a half ago. And uh, the good thing is, the property was previously, or, or has previously been farmed, correct, with with uh, yeah. with sheep and with goat and whatnot. Uh, no more livestock is on the property, but the majority of the property is. Uh, actively maintained and, and begrudgingly uh, mowed by Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> so what we tried to do is keep everything as far away from the wetlands as possible, uh, keeping the house, the driveway, and the septic system uh, away from that, the wetland itself. So nothing is, nothing is proposed within the 50 feet of the wetlands. Um, so the, the small bit of work that's associated with the buffer zone is between 100 and 50. And there's just one little small pocket with almost kind of uh, immature saplings in this area that actually needs to come down in green, and that, that area is about 1,500 square feet. The rest of the work is going to be from lawn to lawn, so it's not going to be a, a, a change in, in ground cover uh, in the buffer zone itself. <clears throat> uh, previously, about a year ago, we had a, a much bigger house footprint, uh, and things have, have, have gradually shrunk and come uh, away from the wetlands and pulled the house uh, as far away as we can and keep it within zoning regulations to the to the west. Okay. Uh, so it's basically a single family house lot. We've gone through the planning board, like I say, for the lot cut 
as well as the scenic road to, to, to split the stone wall that got approved and taking down all the dead trees happened about say a year ago right, right. Uh, when the town came in and actually removed uh, trees within the right of way that were dead okay and the area where the work is going to occur is, you said that's all lawn area currently or previously Correct. disturbed? Correct. Okay. Yep. All right. And then that green area that's shaded, yep. um, what is that plan to be? That is, is going to be lawn. That's going to be lawn. And it's got like some immature saplings growing on it now. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, so there are a couple comments from our consultant yep. Lucas, and I don't know if you've had a chance to we look at those. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, I think the first one was uh, he, he's, he deemed the wetlands to be accurate. Yep. Secondly, uh, the culvert that he referenced is is off the page down this location here. It was determined to be intermittent stream anyway, so it just it didn't happen to be picked up on the plan. Uh, there's no buffer zone associated with it. Uh, so it just, it just didn't make the scope of the plan. Um, uh, the signature question came up as number two, I think with, with the consultant as now explaining it, Diana has a different last name than a mom and a brother. <laughs> right. So if need be, Diana, I mean, uh, Suzanne's here to sign any applications, whether it's- Suzanne's I'm buying it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so if need be, we're more than happy to sign tonight. Uh, three okay. is basically, not applicable for uh, the foundation rain. I actually set it about six inches higher than the groundwater ele elevation. So I, I don't expect anything more than a trickle at best, if ever. Uh, so we, we, we typically don't show any riprap, you know, outlet controls for foundation drains. It's just a four inch drain that we won't be seeing any water 99.9% of the time. Okay. Uh, so I, I don't think we need it. Um, number four. Five, the roof flows, like I say, because it's um, uh, existing lawn now in such a small area is going to be a uh, house or, or pavement. There's not a huge delta in the runoff, so I didn't, I didn't see the need for, for rooftop infiltration. You know, by all means, it's you know, an item for discussion, but uh, I didn't want to show it just because the, the delta in, in runoff numbers is so, so small. Right. Yeah, just to that point, I mean, we yep. typically just like to see the, um, when you get the roof runoff, you know, it infiltrating back into the ground mm -hmm. at the location, mm -hmm. you know, where it's generally originating from. Yep. So if the roof or if the infiltration drains, um, you know, a cost prohibitive or don't make sense for you guys, and maybe what the other option that we consider is, you know, just putting like a gravel curtain around the foundation. Sure. So when it drips off sure. the roof, it infiltrates into the ground sure. right there as opposed to running across the lawn. Absolutely. Uh, does that sound reasonable, Matt? Yeah. Yeah. It's really just a matter of just encouraging that rooftop runoff back into the ground as opposed to you know depending on conditions yeah yeah, yeah we, we're not showing any like some, some of these newer homes have uh, downspouts that drain out and just circulate everything 300 feet away and just dump it into the wetlands right uh, right now we're just expecting the standard you know gutters to to lawn but like you say maybe we can just spec out a gutter to a gravel area so that it regenerates right at the right at the gutter drain sure I don't think that's no, that's fine yeah that's, that's fine okay <coughs> okay um, and the ECBs are adequate, so I yep. think we're good there. And I, and think I haven't I, seen a DEP file number yet either. They made it harder to find DEP file numbers on the mass website. <laughs> I don't know about you, but. Yeah, they're constantly updating it. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been on it a while. It's tough. It's like our school system. <laughs> constantly updating. Are there, are there PIDs on the plans? I come again. Are there um, any? PIBs, the um, like to demarcate the limit of work. Uh, so this is permanently. Oh, so permanently. Like okay. Boulders or fencing. Or sure. Yep. Since it's all existing lawn area now, except for this one small area, I, I hadn't shown any, but uh, it is surrounded by erosion control uh, for construction purposes. But so the idea is, is not so much them, but sure. somebody in the future, not really even realizing that. You're not supposed to go beyond this point, sure. And that's so that's why we require. Sure. But that lawn creep, 
yeah. Know, we have medallions that you can put up okay. on a know. tree. Yeah. So you know, we would just ask that maybe you put like three or four of them up around the perimeter. Sure, along the tree line itself. Yeah, like where yeah. the grass ends. Yep. Yeah. 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 All along the grass. Yep. I would say. Yeah, because this this is all grass right now. Right. Oh, oh, one. oh one. It's a lot of grass. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of grass. Right. Mr. Chairman, are we, well, used to be are you done with that letter? I have a question. Yes, so uh, yeah. questions like or comments you, from the commission? So you I have get a question. A tree line oh. pretty much through here. So that's what they're trying to avoid, right. having that tree line go away. Yeah, exactly. And having yeah, a lawn, moves back and, you know, pushing back to here. Yeah. Right. They're going to want to see that the area just remains wild. Sure. You know, so, so on this met, side and this side, trees. this yes. side yep. wild. Don can get you the information. They're a couple bucks a piece. Okay. Well, expensive. we don't sell them. Uh, there's a builder in town who's got extras. Oh, you know, yeah. the, okay. he'll, no, the town doesn't get involved in that. Okay. But, so. but you can give them the contact Oh, I can get you the contact information. Okay, that's, right. that's, what I, that's what I was uh, Yeah, like just to send say. you an email request and I'll yeah. Yeah, okay. answer that information. Yeah. Okay, yep. Questions from the commission? Um, so, I do. The um, southeast corner, that's yep. within the... 50 to 100 within the hunt, right? Yes. Have you, uh, no, up the, of the house, I apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. The corner of the house. Have you uh, looked at, and is it possible to rotate the house a little bit to get that corner out of the 50 to 100? It or would possibly go back, step back a little further? Or? Yeah, the, due to the fact that the septic system is in this location That's, here. Yeah, what's and the, the setback distance? distances from the house to the septic, it was, it was impossible to fit all three in that, in that area. So it did. It did creep up into that fifty to one hundred, but we did look into that. Absolutely. And where's the water? Where's the well? Uh, it's town water. Out town there. Oh, it's yeah, town right water. Down, right down where the driveway okay. comes in. So how about how about if you bring it? You can even bring the garage further away from the leach field if you um, you know turn it right. So if you turn it, rotate it towards the north. I in assume this, in this direction here. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So you're actually. Um, well, you could get the whole thing still the leach field away, I think. What no, we you have that big you have that slope on the left, right? You won't meet that setback He's got though. The setback though. Yeah. Yeah, I, this, yeah, this I see that now. We're fighting right here. I see the slope and I see that now in, yeah. in the setback. Okay. Yeah. All right. I had to ask. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Um, could this sapling area remain and not turn into lawn or or some turn into a landscape shrub tree area? Some of it could. I, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, because the grading, we, we're kind of retaining some with a wall in this location here, and we're trying to do a quick drop to here. There's only a handful of saplings in there, so I would say when we flag it out, if, if they can remain, absolutely. <clears throat> would we allow him to replace some of them selectively, you know, mm -hmm. with whatever, ornamentals or mm -hmm. shrubbery? Maybe Instead of the saplings, which are going to just go wild, and someday somebody's going to be in there asking to cut them yeah. down. Yeah, if you wanted, if you wanted to keep big, large, you know, canopy like trees, kind of away, you might want to say, can we just have it a, a shrub meadow yeah, kind of area right, where you're right, only exactly. mowing it once a just, year? Yeah, just not you know? mowed, right? Yeah. Exactly. Or you mow around something. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. just to keep away. But some know, plantings which you'll like as landscaping too, right? right. Because, because, yeah, those saplings are going to become problems. Bushes. Yeah, not opposed yeah. to that at all. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. Questions or comments from the audience? Okay, if I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent with our standard conditions and the conditions as discussed. So moved. Do you want to revise the um, plan if they can find an area to hatch out? Yes. Yeah. Is, it, is it the whole area that's going to be or a section of it? Yeah, I, yeah. I think, we can I think somewhere in almost there, that yeah. exact same area. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And if and you could just uh, put the look, um, and the, the medallions on there for the, the yeah, location yeah, yeah. of those. So once I get an idea what they look like, right. I can just show right. yeah. a handful yeah. of location. And then subject to the issuance of DP file number, we can't. Correct. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point, Don. Um, okay. So you get a second. Uh, did we get a motion? Yes. And a second, please. I'll second it. All Nobody in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, good luck. Thank you very Wait. much. What do I need to sign? <laughs> 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 I knew Suzanne was here for that. Is that it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, get it all done at once. Watch you can in one. Yes. Yes, absolutely.
John's very efficient. Yes. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Ready. Ready. So you get a trip to the town hall. Exactly. It's owner and day. Don's yeah. like going to Super Dog. Super Bowl oh, well, merchandise. Uh, He's got it <laughs> ready <laughs> for <laughs> either <laughs> way. Yep. All you have right? to do is yeah. either yeah. way. Oh, okay. And then whichever way it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here you go. You've got the signed affidavit. Thanks. Are we one of those companies that shows up with that? Thank you. No, you're one of the good ones. I like that he asked. Now I get a new house. Good luck with it. He gets the other house. I get the new house. Oh, nice. I like it. He's still going to cut your grass. Yeah, yeah. That's not going to stop. Let us know when you have your move in party. Yeah. You can leave those chairs. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Come on, Mom. All right, thank you. All right, Good you're night. welcome. Yeah. Good night. Enjoy the summer. Okay. Good stuff. Just play it off. I'm still. Softball is starting. Are you on Navy? Yes. I just joined. I thought you joined the other team. Mr. Petrosi. Hey. How's it going tonight? Oh Good evening. Second four Here tonight, basically, just to discuss uh, HC 39. Okay. HCC 39. Um, so the, the other filings will continue out? Yeah, the planning board, I met with the planning board last night. They're still uh, evaluating waivers. <coughs> Um, so they continue that till August 12th. Okay. So we've got a. We'd like to continue that until that. after that date. So August 20th would be. 20th would work. That's yeah. right after yeah. that. Yeah, that's fine. Right. That'd be great. So, okay. Ho hopefully that'll get some uh, resolution going forward. We got through a few of the waivers that they approved and. Okay. And uh, before we get into this, uh, we are looking into this area here. Uh, Paul McManus was out there, but he went on vacation. So he hasn't given me a report yet, but we hope to have that. On the so, BBW across the street there? Yeah, so okay. he did, uh, when we last met regarding this uh, um, notice of intent, mm -hmm. we had a discussion about trying to avoid the uh, filing under the Wetlands Protection Act and strictly as a uh, local bylaw issue. So we had uh, Paul McManus did go out there and flag these, uh, this wetland area here. Okay. They were field located today. I have other plans. With, I just got the plan for tonight, as a matter of fact. So I don't know if the board wants to take a look at the larger version. Excuse me? It's just this? Yeah. This is the same, is the same thing we're looking at here? Same, same thing. Yeah. Okay. yeah I just, without colors. I just, yeah. Five, yeah. Five, six. So, uh, in any case, um, so we, we had that located. We had them surveyed. And we had the plan revised to remove uh, any activity um, outside the 100 foot buffer of this uh, location. Okay. So, we're strictly. Uh, in the jurisdiction, under, under of, the jurisdiction of the bylaw. Okay. And again, what's, you know, what we're trying to do here is eliminate the flow of water onto our property um, and um, direct it in the natural grade of the roadway uh, and so on. There are a number of other, you know, um, I don't know if you folks have been out there at all, but there is a number of invasive species that are located along this stretch of road mm -hmm. um, that could be uh, eliminated with hand work, not uh, no machine activity, but that would be something, uh, I don't know if that's considered a minor activity that's permitted under your bylaw or not, but uh, this is really the focus of the, uh, the notice of intent. Okay. Uh, what you see shaded in purple is the uh, existing pavement, um, and from here over, this is gravel. It's presumed to be the private portion of the of Leonard Street, 
Uh, the town, as I mentioned at the last meeting, the town has given us a uh, limit of what the public way, um, where it stops, where it begins. Um, but we're presuming that since that's where the pavement is, that's where the public way ends. Okay. And that, that's pretty much it. So all you, so just so I'm clear, the proposed work will consist of paving? No pavement. So just, just gravel. So just re regrading this roadway. There's no pavement involved. Okay, so you're regrading. Regrading. And then what's the? Installing a berm. Yep. Which so you is have a the berm. detail on the plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then um, just simply really blocking that pipe out. And we haven't determined what, uh, whether or not that's going to be uh, simply a, a plug or just a um, uh, removal of the, of the pipe entirely. Uh, be talking to DBW to see how they want to uh, handle that. Okay. Uh, we don't really want to go out into the street and into the pavement. We just really want to just cut the pipe off, block it. Right. Because yeah, if it's a removal of the pipe, then that will it's obviously change the nature of the filing that we have here, right? Well, uh, in, in terms of the scope of work, it would probably be more of a, uh, it's not going to, involve more intrusion into the limit of work that we already have established it's everything would be done from the outside right from the roadway side um, there isn't any anticipation of going into this area but we just wanted to keep uh, erosion control barrier there just to, as a precaution uh, but all of the work that we anticipate would be on the upper side um, on the roadway side. Okay. And when you regrade the roadway, um, how will the elevation, you know, the, the how is that going to change? It really isn't. I mean, if, uh, I don't know if you see other, um, like, gravel roads, it's really just, um, just smoothing filling it, it out, smoothing it out so filling in the ruts, um, making it, less of a bump. So you're not there. excavating it at all. Oh no, no. It's just no. going in basically. Which is probably like a skim coat of gravel and a compaction that would uh, make the way a little bit more of a uh, passable. For this passable. It's less bumpy I would call it. Because if you if you um, travel down there now there are you know there are erosion um, channels that uh, allow water to flow directly onto our property. Mm -hmm. So is that pink, the berm? This is the yeah, this pink That's is the, the berm, which the is berm. shown uh, right there. It's basically a gravel um, soil-based um, And what, what's the length? The length of this to here? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's probably um, about 100 feet. Okay. I don't even have, have this uh, scale is 1 inch equals 30, so... 30, 60, minutes, probably, probably a little over 100 feet. Has that been shortened from the last time? Oh, yeah, plan, yeah. Right? The last time we were out here, we had the limit of work out here. In fact, I, could, I have it attached here. I can break out a high cut. Have you reviewed this? You know that he just no. got, we just got it today, so nobody's okay. seen it. But this is what it looked like at the last plan. So we were down here with the limit of work. So now we're, you know, we're up here somewhere. Right. So we're, we're roughly at this line right here where, where we, yeah, yeah. That's mm -hmm. where we are now. Okay. So we eliminated that. All right. Um, so no, this, I, like but I said, I just got the plan in. five o'clock. Yeah. Right, yeah, I, I meant the, uh, um, the flagging that was done across the street. We didn't use that either. Yeah, right? I didn't know it existed. Apparently. Yeah, so uh, I know when we talked, you asked to do a, um, you know, put a stake in the ground. Right. We forgot to do that. So 
but if we stake out limit of work, you're going to you're going to be able to see where we're stopping it. Um, so you'll stake out the end of the road. Is that what you suggest? Yeah. Well, I'm, I asked them to put a stake at the hundred foot marker on okay. the side, so we would know where this from here would be. I think that's what you were. Yeah, just to just so to put a stake from here, a stake here, and a stake okay. here. Right. That okay. would mark the hundred foot. Um, yeah, I mean, edge. it's just a matter of when and if this goes to construction. A matter of saying, okay, you know, the limit of work can't go any further because you don't have all your permits. Right. To do right. work any well to the well. Typically, we would have somebody come out and inspect the roads and control right. right. So yep. I mean, yeah, so we point, pull the tape at that. Time. Yeah, we can. Um, but typically, we're we're inspecting for the installation. We're not going to pretend to be surveying. No, right no, I know. I know I mean. No, I understand. I understand. So, we will have that staked out though for a hundred foot limit of work. Okay, I think it's pretty straightforward. Questions or comments from the commission? Uh, I have just a comment on the plan, not the substance. Uh, your note above the Leonard Street uh, existing drainage pipe to be removed. It actually should read existing drainage pipe to be abandoned, and you can add in place, but it's not being removed. Where, where are you reading? Uh, the note that's next to the oh, right here. Frederick Meyer House. Oh, how would you want that? Oh, well, it's I, not I mean, to be removed, so it's going to be abandoned. Right? Well, well what does abandoned mean? I mean, abandoned means it's abandoned in place. You cap the end, you crush the yeah. end, not you otherwise leave it there. Not excavating. You're not excavating, exactly. A huge well, we don't know that yet because I haven't talked to the DPW about okay. how so, all right. do it. So, so I'd in like the to end, let's just make sure that it's accurate. Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Anyone else? Yeah. I, I'm not sure where I am here. But explain to me how this is going to work. So right now we have a catch basin that enters into a storm drain that goes under Leonard Street mm -hmm. and then stops or does something comes to it discharges end. onto my property okay so if you plug that mm -hmm. then the water that's now going into that storm drain is there any water going into that storm drain by a pipe oh uh, there's uh there's whatever they did with box mill it's coming down and then there's there's a catch basin there's two catch basins and there's a storm scepter that they put in i guess and so there's that water is going into that pipe, which wants the pipe to fill. And it's going to bubble up out of the storm drain. Correct. Which strikes me as not a very good idea. But that's well, not what this shows. Excuse me? What you just explained is not what the plan shows. What do you mean? This plan only shows two catch basins going into a drainage manhole. Oh, okay. Across well, no I, storm scepter, no additional piping. I, I, I don't know that. What, I think there's a storm scepter there. I'm not sure what was. So she's just saying, you know, she's yeah, referring. Uh, talking this point right here. Yeah, right. Was was talking right here. yeah I'm talking right, right there. Drain in. Oh, that that there is a storm scepter, I think. Not a right. Drain so man. you got a catch basin here, catch basin here. And that's a storm scepter. Right. And then you've got additional piping from the new development feeding oh. into these. Correct. Right. Oh, that complicates. Not quite sure whether or not if it's um, surface or whether it's Where a pipe system. Oh. Okay. So. Um, I don't know. We didn't know. Yeah, but it goes off the plane. No, so no. if it was just surface, it's wherever the crest is. It's right. Part of it comes down the gutter yeah, line. Part of it goes over here to their their detention basin, right? So just yeah, whatever, right whatever blacktop is coming down and getting caught by those two catch basins. And just to be clear, I mean we're not permitting the um, you know the removal or plugging that pipe at this point. The ultimate approval is from the DPW to do that. It's, uh, Presumably. So. But we want to show on our plan what is right. actually yeah, done. We want to, right, correct. I mean, yeah. I'm sure the, uh, the whatever we work out, I mean, it's a long process here that we've been going through. So um, if you'd like to find a different solution, but for now, this is Right. It's in the town's hands to decide how they want to handle this. Right, right. Yeah. So I just want to make it clear that that's under the. Uh, You're just simply allowing us to do the work if they give us permission to do the work. Correct. I that's think really there's a standard condition for that, right? That our permit 
does not alleviate any other requirements for other yeah local yeah, permit, yeah, yeah you know, federal like, state yeah. town if this were a house it still would yeah. have to get a building permit and all the other permits yeah. that are necessary I just mean I think so. it's I think it's a condition a general right. condition when yeah you can't start work that yeah basically well that would be the if it doesn't have yeah basically you wouldn't be able to start any of the work until you get all your permits well, so it, could not, be like, it wouldn't be like piecemeal, like, okay, I'm going to do my berm, I'm going to do my gravel road, I'll yeah. wait to, to hear about the drain. The, the scene, yeah. the way know, it's kind of it's kinda interesting because uh, w nobody wants to claim ownership of the pipe, even though it's, there's a combination of people involved because of the public way portion of it and the private way of that box mill. So I'm not quite sure what other permits are going to be required, but we certainly are. Uh, working, going to work with the DPW to, you know, uh, try to figure that out. Figure that out, and as I said before, we may be back with another alternative mm -hmm. um, to alleviate drainage in another another direction. If we, okay, if that works, if that makes any sense. Yep. So is that because the DPW gave comments back in April? Has, has those changed? What What did he say? I, I wasn't aware of any comments that he. The DPW will not issue a permit for work within Leonard Street without first checking with town council due to the litigation. Yeah, so Leonard Street being Leonard Street, the public way. So that's why I can't say whether or not we'll be digging this part of the way up. But the town has no jurisdiction over the private way. So, but you don't know if that's in the private way or the public way. The town hasn't given us a determination of where this ends so that's why uh DPW where the commissioners, public way is right <laughs> our, the way it was accepted at town meeting back in 1922 just Yikes. accepts it to a certain point where a, a certain house was oh not by distance yeah. not by distance oh. and the town has never recorded a acceptance oh. plan or survey plan that would have identified like you do with subdivisions today like uh shows you the meets and bounds and so on so we're do we're dealing with a lot of historical records that go back quite a ways um are there any historical plans as built i'll say that are scalable so you can at least approximate where the we just houses we just was? did a uh we just did a complete title on this both buckland street and leonard street um and the plans that were recorded we have copies of them but they they don't say whether or not it's a public way or not they just show yeah um you know lots or houses on the lots um you know with uh usually where the town has stopped the pavement that's usually where they've considered to be the end of the public yeah, way I wouldn't assume that. I wouldn't so uh, we're not going to, I want to give you assurances that we're not going to go jump in there and do this tomorrow or whenever if we were to get approved. Yeah. We're working with the town. It's a long involved process. There is litigation um, and so, there is notices sorry. intent that related to the development of the property. So in the end, hopefully we, I'm hoping that we can come up with a solution that everybody's happy with. So let's do the chair. So um, what Dal was saying is piecemeal. So if it's not, if you're not doing it, it's like all or nothing, would you actually make the improvements to the road if you're not doing it? Like, the, would the, you make improvements to the, like the private section of the road separate from the other work? Well, the, the, the whole purpose of this is to remove the, the flow of water onto our property. So it's all or nothing. It's all or nothing, okay. yes. A question I have is I think you've said to us a bunch of times that if the pipe is gone, the natural flow of water will be to the west. The west being the well, flow down the road. We'll flow down right. the road but to me, flowing. that's a big difference. If the pipe is removed and there's no berm, the natural flow of water is still into your property based on the contour lines. Mm -hmm. yeah, it depends I mean, on the road. We, we, we go down here? It I, I've been like, down there. Does it seem that way? Yeah. I'm looking at the contour lines on his oh, map. I know that. There, there's a stone wall along this property line that, uh, you know, 
and there still may end up being a flow that enters onto our property, but it won't be that kind of a flow that creates that point source discharge. Right. I mean, this flow. is this is this, this, flow, this is what's causing our dilemma flow. here with the commission being, in a lot of ways, that the existence of that. What I'm suggesting is, is with the berm. <laughs> You're now fighting the natural. Fl That's the reason for the berm is there. It's the no natural flow of water is straight, perpendicular to the contour lines. No, the, the straight flow of water down Leonard Street is down Leonard Street. <laughs> That's where the water What's flows. What's the point of the berm? Why not just the berm is to keep the water from entering onto our because property. the natural Directly. flow would be. Good. We don't know that. We don't know that. We we think that that is part of the reason. What's happening out there today is that people are discharging from their sump pumps directly across the street onto our property. That's what's happening today. People have cut grooves in the roadway to direct water onto our property directly. That's what's happening today. That's not the natural flow of the water. The natural flow of the water is in this direction. Whether or not uh, you can, we, we did a drainage report, we submitted it in, in connection with the other notice of intent that establishes where the flow of the water goes. It does. It goes in this direction. The whole thing goes in that direction. But Leonard Street particularly goes in this direction. And it goes into these, you know, there's curbing and there's, uh, they paved it and they had put a um, uh, um, catch, cul basin. catch basin culvert there that that directs the water directly into that catch basin and goes onto our property. So that I understand. Okay. The and berm seems to be an admission that natural flow would be toward your property. No. I can't help you. Not that's a stumbling block for me. Okay. Questions or comments from the audience? Okay. Yes, Matt. So just one quick, just in looking at this revised plan now, mm -hmm. where you shorten the berm. So, is the thought, I guess, to get to your point, Ted, if the natural flow is, you know, theoretically coming this way, we can agree or disagree on that. But where you come to the end of the berm, if that's true that the natural flow wants to come this way, mm -hmm. when it gets to the berm, it's likely just to make the turn. It's going to spread. Either it's going to. The, the, believe believe it or not, I don't know if you've been out there in a storm or not, but this is the water should go into this drainage ditch that goes underneath this driveway and goes all the way down. That's really kind of where the flow goes. That's where it should go. Um, the fact of the matter is that the water that is going there is causing the problem for all of these people down there. And they all have water problems down there. So I guess the reason why I bring that up as a potential point is that if the berm ends there and you have, you know, a considerable amount of water that's going to be running along this berm, presuming the berm's built properly, mm -hmm. it should right. be fine. But when it gets to the end, if it does want to take that, I guess, right-hand turn, you know, that's where you're potentially going to see erosion because you haven't built anything, you have right. nothing stabilized. So the, only, the reason why we're here tonight and, you know, it caught us by surprise that you might want a, a separate NOI to be filed under the Wetlands Protection Act. If this, if this does not function the way we think it should function, then we'll be back with another NOI to continue the process uh, if it's necessary to do that. Um, I guess just the I guess my recommendation to the commission would be, you know, we need assurances that the water, if it does take that turn, it's not going to cause erosion you, and damage that well. Yeah, so we we bank. could we'd be happy to put some riprap or something mm -hmm. to alle you know alleviate that concern. Again, all we wanted to do was make sure that we we're outside of the hundred foot, so right. that we didn't have. Yeah, you should, that's a good point, Matt. Dirt. You should look at yeah. having some type of mitigation there, so when the water is coming down that dirt road, right. you know, it's going to pick up the sediment. And I think to Matt's point, what's going to end up happening is, you know, some of it will probably continue down, but you're also going to get some that's going to kind of yeah. is, is go with the topography yeah. and, you know, move in this way. We just want to make sure that under, you know, a 100-year storm, 
which happens a couple times a year now, mm -hmm. you know, you're not getting sediment that's all washing down into the wetland here, right? So some type of riprap or... Sure, there is, uh, what's there now is a stone wall that runs along here. Maybe what we need to do is you know, it starts with just anything. build up that stone wall with a more stone wall. Yeah, but it starts, you know, considerably you further down. You want to avoid rivulets, yeah. too, going as it goes Yeah. Do yeah. the chair, like, force. personally, I think, you know, as an engineer, this design is kind of boggles me, but like we're trying to under, like, F, like what ifs? I, I think they can do an active erosion control if they build it and that happens. I mean, I think the design as it is, I don't like the design, but as a conservation commission, I don't think it's going to really negatively affect the, the um, resource areas, you know, if it's built well, the way that this is on the plan and if it's monitored the way it's supposed to be and if they mitigate all the conditions. I, I don't think it's going to design and I think you might have issues with your neighboring properties but that's not our jurisdiction so I mean I'm inclined for the work on the private road this stuff I mean you got issues everywhere else but I think this is fine I don't think it's a great design but I think it, that's fine points up that mr. chair so what what will eventually happen I would think is that these two areas are going to be connected so you're going to have a uh, it could be we, regulated we, wetland resource area all the way along the road. No, just just you mean here to here? Well, yeah. If, if still whatever be, comes off the road is eventually going to. You're now taking what was going into the first area. What? What's not you? Some of the uh, the water that was going into the first area and created this first area is now being redirected to the area that's in between the two, yeah. the first one and the second. Well, they're both so isolated. ultimately they're going to be connected. Yeah, but they're both isolated. It's, it's an isolated wetland regardless either way. Well, right. it won't be an isolated wetland. Well, it will be one much longer. bigger isolated wetland. Yeah, right. Uh, but it also will potentially, taking the water that's going in here, will change the, uh, you know, the environment of the beginning of this, right? We this is know. now not going to receive any extra precipitation, right? right? So that's all I'm saying. I'm just pointing yeah. that out. Yeah. Okay. Well, let um, the DPW make the, the decision or recommendation, okay. and uh, yeah. right. I guess we can move on from there. That. So should we continue this out to the 20th as well? Or? This? Yeah. Or do you want to no, wait until? I just want to close it and move on. I, it's, you make the make a condition of uh, your, of the order that. Uh, the well, there's a couple things we don't know what the um, Matt hasn't reviewed the boundary yet. Okay. That's one thing, and the second thing is is we don't know what the disposition of that pipe is going to be. Whether it's going to be abandoned in place or removed. Well, so I'd like to know that before we vote on it so um, how do we get that answer I mean I mean I, I don't I, I, can't, assume I, one. I, I don't want to be held hostage by what somebody's uh, whether or not somebody's gonna make that decision or withhold the decision so um, through the chair yeah I mean I agree I would love to know what it is either but I don't think it'll change the plants because erosion I was looking at where the erosion sediment controls are and I don't think whether it's removal or abandonment, it's the same effect. Yeah, because it's all within the paved area, so it's not like you would put yeah, erosion control. The ECB stays in the same place one way or the other. Yeah. <coughs> what if it's neither? So what well, is I, I then it stays as is. Well, yeah, but it's not going to stay as is. You would, there's no scenario you envision where that pipe will stay there discharging onto that property. Right? There is a scenario, but it involves more input from the commission and from the town. I mean, it, but this is what's proposed. Yeah, right. Right. This is so. So, given what's proposed, right. right. The ECB is the, where it is. Is where it is. And the only thing about that might be to extend it along the Leonard Street part, past the yeah. borough. Our our objective is, that, you know, we don't know how long the process is going to go with the other uh, thing that we have going. So we just want to stop the water from going in now and causing any further damage. I know you got to revise plan. But you're, you're seeking approval for this part, so. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm with you. I mean, okay. Um, Contingent on letting us know. So, uh, a 
couple things. One is, uh, I don't know if you saw Don's email today. So oh, sent out yesterday? About the, uh, uh, yesterday, yeah. About the extensions? Yeah, so. No, and about. About the membership. Right. But, yeah, so Melissa and Jim haven't been formally. Um, that might be happening right now. Loaded in. They're doing that tonight. Well, I um, hope they come back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope so, too. Um, it's on record. You might even check the It's very rare that you get seven people to come to a meeting oh. all, the, uh, all the time, so it's very good that you guys. Uh, but you need to be sworn in, too. Uh, that's the other thing. So, uh, so isn't that a reason why we should just... Um, I'm hoping the commission will approve this or with a provision that... Um, we, we sit down with DPW and decide what the disposition, how they want to uh, handle the pipe. Right. That's really kind of, and we'll, you know, we're willing to wait until that. Um, yeah. So from just from a process standpoint, because we have two members, the other the other thing is, is Janine has been absent for a couple of the meetings, so we run into the Mullins issue. Um, well, you'd only have. Yeah, because you've had you've had three hearings. This is the third, so Janine missed the first two. I don't know if she's going to feel comfortable voting. Um, mm -hmm. And then you've lost like, okay. Jim and, and um, Melissa. Melissa. Why is Jim and Melissa going to vote tonight? Why? Because their mm -hmm. term expired on June thirtieth. Oh, it's <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> However, I have received an email. The latest was that uh, it's it's being submitted. So. First, I got well, the one I, I that expires. Your application is right. your application is getting reviewed by a board of selectmen yeah, tonight. Yeah. So yeah. theoretically, they could have already voted, and they could have been. <gasps> they could have, but they haven't been sworn in. That's the other. That's the other piece of it. Right. All right. So t just tell me how you want to handle it. I mean, so I certainly don't. If want we can to. just continue until August twentieth, one of the other ones, and then we can. Hopefully, you'll hear back from the DEP or DPW before then. If not, we can um, we can vote on it at, at that meeting. Okay. That's okay. It's not going to kill you. And then the second point was just for clarification, because I know we talked about this at the last meeting. We uh, typically request a peer review on the engineering design, but it's our understanding that you do not want to do that. Correct. It's really nothing you heard okay. from your own engineer on the on the board. It's really. I'm not the only engineer. A couple of them. A couple of them, but it's not, it's not rocket science here. We're building a berm and we're grading a roadway and we're just okay. eliminating water flow. Okay. Okay, so we'll continue it out um, to August 20th, if that's okay chair? with you, yeah, Mr. Sure. Petrosi. Do you check and ask one more question? Um, yep. Sorry. For the um, plan, because they're confirming that, can you also confirm this piece that if that's a storm center and correct that? that I'm pretty existing? sure that is a storm center. And if there's another pipe going through? I think at the time uh, when they did that, there was the water was flowing into our property untreated, and I think the commission uh, reviewed it under uh, RDA. Uh, just make sure under that the stormwater, uh, not, maybe not the commission, but the planning board reviewed it. Beta reviewed it, and probably proposed uh, some treatment there because originally it was going in untreated. So. That's my recollection of it. I just feel like if it's, if the whatever the final one gets voted on gets put on a record, it needs to be correct. Yeah. So do you want us to actually label that a storm septum? If that's what it is. Find out what it is and put it on. If yeah. it isn't, then it's final. Yeah, it's it says, right. uh, it says this has an existing drain manhole, so maybe it is a drain. I'll uh, I'll, I'll check it out. Through the through the chair. Yep. Uh, basically, as we were looking, you've got you're indicating a. Catch basin here, catch basin here, and then probably you're, but you're not really indicating the catch basin that's over here. So on the, on yeah. the photos, you've got. There is, there is. A, they, so they, here's that, here's that neighborhood where you said, you know, you might get flowed down into the area. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, that's so a good I picture. So I think your, your plan is picking up, I'm sorry. You've got the catch basin here, right? You've got the catch basin here. So the, and then there's a third one over here. There's been uh, even, then you would have flow. even after these photographs, there's been other work out there because right now they have the berm going around one of the catch basins. That's the manhole right oh, there. That's the manhole. Is, yeah. that, is that your? That, that's a sewer manhole, I okay. think. Okay. Yeah. I'll double check with the engineers because they were you know, they were out there. Don, can you do that again? The, the flip through the photos slowly. So yeah, so basically, 
you got a catch basin here, one here. That's the beginning of box mill. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. One correct. Over in the so, corner. so as and you're looking up, you're, you're looking up at box mill. That's so box mill. So all that water. All, goes, all that water from here. Yeah. yeah right. Goes in. right down into there. Right. right. And so into that basin. Here, and that's now going to come one. down there to so the got, berm. So you got you one got here, one right. there. That's Maybe that's your that's your manhole. That's your drain manhole. Yeah, you drain your storm scepter. Yeah. And then you've got. That's the sewer. Uh, that's the other sewer way, right sorry. there. And you got a catch basin here, true, right? Is that? Yeah, but that is. Uh, it's hard to say. It could be just a puddle. There's only there's only one catch basin. Well, there's basin. one on this side of the street, and one on that side of the street, and your plan yeah. is showing the, the um, kind of close together. The third one you're looking for, Don. The the catch basin that's right next to the curb on the far right yeah. is now in their lawn. They yeah, they, they did. They put a berm around it. Oh, they, they moved oh, they that berm curb. around it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the, you know when they did the survey work was uh, you know quite a while ago. So I mean, we submitted this whatever this, these plans are back last year. So. So there's been other work that's out there. There's now. So if you stop on that one and go to the left of that cone that you're pointing to, yeah. the, the next catch basin is right about where you're pointing. Yeah, right inside there. Right there. The yeah, it's surrounded oh, okay. by grass now. Oh, okay. And some hay bounce. So those are the two? Yeah. That one and that one. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I didn't pick up that one. All right, well, we can we can do a, a measurement to tape it off. Add that to the plan? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think but it is a dump. some assurances that there aren't other pipes coming into those catch basins. I, I, I don't know. You'd have to look at those subdivision plans, right? Well, but they, yeah. I, maybe the applicant should. But um, I mean, because I think the concern is, is that if you know, if you're going to basically plug up a pipe somewhere, yeah, the water is either going to fill those catch basins and over top, yeah. or it's going to surcharge a pipe. But then, if there are pipes going back up that road, get back close. it's going to surcharge those pipes up up there somewhere and could affect drainage on that, on that property. Yeah, so absolutely. I think that's what, to Jeff's point of the well, engineering review is understanding kind of the big picture. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go out there and check it out. But my guess, I think that my recollection is that it's all surface runoff. The front part of the subdivision runs to those two catch basins. And then the rest of the runoff is supposed to go into that little detention basin yeah, that's on the right, yeah. but it's yeah. uh, which is, I've never seen any water in it. So You know, which is just emphasizes why I think it's important to have someone like B to take a look at it. So rather than saying, I think it does this. You know, I'm, you know. I'm, I'm in so many towns right now. Beta's reviewing three different, I, I mean, they might as well be on my payroll for God's sake. Don, uh, but just you know, again. Did you go back to I the mean, photo of looking up box mill again? I know for certain there's a catch basin to the left of that car that's parked up there. Yeah. So to the left of that out. car, there's a catch basin. Right along here. I'll, yeah. I'll check it out. That I know for sure. I don't think they put any pipe in the in the ground. I, I, that I don't know. Yeah, I just know I, because I thought it was so poorly created when they created it. I know everything up here should be shown. This is uh, a situ uh, yeah, uh, an area where there's the such a high groundwater. Yeah. 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 They literally have it's sump it's pumps yeah. going 24 7 there. Yeah, there's a big stormwater problem yeah. up yeah. there. Well, help me help you, is what I say. <laughs> I could I can do a lot. Uh, okay, okay, so we'll continue this to the 20th then. Oh, I don't know if anything and we'll, we'll get extra information. Yeah. So you guys didn't have any comments or questions, did you? The audience? Uh, yeah, I'm just curious about where his apartment street is going to go onto Pleasant Street. Where's the water going to drain there? Say, say gonna, you mean on Buckland Street? Where it's now on Mayor's property. Where is that? When the street is that that water flow is all flowing the opposite direction back west. Can we just get your name for the record, sir? Uh, Tom Marconi. Tom Marconi. What's about? your address? What's that? What's your address, sir? Sixty-one Pleasant Street. Sixty-one Pleasant. Thank you. Yep. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. Okay. Hope you get appointed. I'll go home and watch it on TV and see if this is actually happening. <laughs>
Okay, thank you, Mr. Petrosi. Yeah, let me do that now. If it becomes any of them work, do you want do you want to stick around for the sure. for the extension? That on the, oh, oh, you, you mean number yeah, nine. on the uh, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Right. I'll stick around for those. Sure. sure. All right, why don't we just go to those right now? So on, it's on the CA report on the flip side of your. Uh, yep. So Wall Street Development Zero Line Street an extension request for an order of resource area delineation under the wetlands bylaw. I get a motion to approve that extension. Uh, oh, sorry. Through the chair? Yeah. Uh, I, I sent him a, uh, an email. Typically, um, like oh, under the follow it, you would, you would have their wetland scientists say um, there haven't been any changes or have, there have been any changes. And then if any of the flags are like, you know, broken, right. gone, illegible, they could just reflag. So basically, then the, 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 you know, the conservation staff can go out. And look at all the flags again to see if they're in agreement. So typically, that would be. So you. So we well, haven't done that yet. Let me ask you a question because, uh, uh, and I could be wrong, but when you file a notice of intent, doesn't that necessarily lock in the uh, the resource area delineation for three years? Yes. But you're asking for an extension of that. Right, but this is so my the original resource. Termination was in 2016. We filed a notice of intents in 2018 and 19. So theoretically, we were locked in for three years. So I'm, I'm only asking. From 2016. Because, um, yeah, because I'm just trying to procedurally try to make sure we cover all the bases because if. Yeah, for some reason we run into a problem. Uh, so the question year. is is when we filed the notice of intent with the flags checked at that point no because you had an ORAT right and now it'll <coughs> expire in, in what August <coughs> next month yeah, yeah so something like that so he's asking to go beyond August right so I right. know I understand that so. but when we filed the original notice of intent and you know Matt as part of this process usually goes out and takes a look at the site right yeah, if, if there's an ORAD that says the wetland boundary is established and there's no need for me to look at the yeah, wetland we don't. boundary because it's locked in. Right, right, right. okay. So, so I think Mr. Petrosi's point is that he's filed a notice of intent, so that now would lock in that boundary. And my experience would say that it's only locked in once an order or condition is, is, issued. is issued, not just the filing of a notice. Of intent. Agreed, but even on a denial, it's still, let's say there was a denial and we were in court for five years, that resource delineation would still hold for the entire five year period. So it's, I'm just trying to make it. Yeah, I'm not sure. So I'm just trying to procedurally do it correctly so that this, uh, we don't run into that. So, I mean, we theoretically could be here for 20 years and that resource area delineation would hold if we're still in court. Yeah, that's what I said. Based on what I've uh, read. Yeah, and I guess the other side of the coin is if, for so, if something happened and you withdrew the application and refiled something different than, than that. So, the, so in that event, let's say, for example, we were to work out some sort of arrangement with the town and other things that would require us to refile, I wouldn't want to be held to a different standard relative to the resource delineation. I'd rather have an extension from the commission saying that we could still use that line as our delineated resource area because there's been three years of water that's gone onto that property that uh, could have significantly uh, damaged, further damaged the property in which case we would. Oh, I, I, you know, I, Jeff, I, can, I, I agree that the ORAD's the cleanest way to do it, but I think, I don't think the commission should just say, yeah, we extend it without looking at it because the whole point of the ORAD is to make sure that it's accurate. And if you're saying it's got three years of drainage, those wetlands may be larger. Right, but then in which case, we have problems, <coughs> serious problems. Everybody has serious problems. Yeah, so Matt, I mean, you're going to be going out there to look at the new delineation it just put in for the BPW so maybe when you're doing that you can just take a look to make sure yeah. that the flag is in talk place. To, I'll talk to Oxpo who did the original flagging in the you know I don't know if you have a copy of the resource delineation that was we have it in the office. I mean I think those flags can be put back in place it's just not going to happen 
So yeah, I mean, when I've been out there, the the flags that are left are kind of few and far between, oh, yeah, so yeah. it would be difficult to review it without having the flags yeah. refreshed. Let me uh, let me I see. I mean, that, that could be a survey or somebody. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, Oxbow that does that. Would the, how would the commission feel about a, approving the extension subject to us installing the re, re hanging the flags as they were previously by Oxbow? By Oxbow, yeah. Um. I mean, I think that seems reasonable. Yeah, you don't have to extend it for three years. You could extend it for three months if you want. Right. Yeah. Give me more than that. So, <laughs> no, to give you time to do, to give you time to do the flagging and so forth. Oh, I see. Right, is that what you're thinking about? Yeah. yeah because you, you don't want to, you don't want it to expire and then be like the commission right. saying, "Well, it's expired. Tough luck." Right. No, I know. That's so, right. I don't want it to be. So that's not I, fair. So I would just say, I would just say, you know, at least give me one years and subject to us. Installing the flags as they were previously uh, flagged out before, and hopefully in a year's time, depending on what happens in these other matters, that we come to peace and harmony. Well, he can't do any work to still these other approvals. Yeah, I think I think it unless you just reflag by a qualified level scientist or original flag was established. Kind of a standard they, they would do. <laughs> What's so Don? What I'm sorry. I'm just reading. I mean, I'm just reading the regs. Yeah, for extension permit request, also must meet all the following conditions at the time of the written request. No request for an extension permit will be granted unless at the discretion of the commission, the wetland is either reflagged by a qualified wetland scientist or the original scientist, and approved flagging is reestablished in the field by survey. Reflagging flagging shall be required when previously stab flagging are illegible or no longer sufficiently present. Discretion of the commission reflagging shall be based on the consideration of the current condition of flagging as well as proximity of the proposed work. Yeah, is that the discretion of the commission? So what I propose is that we extend it for three months for now. Okay. Um, and then that'll give you a chance to go out there and refresh it. And where does that put us time-wise? Where, what, July, August, September, October? So, and is that is that seasonally? Is that a good time? Is or is there, you know, may it, uh, well, it be in, like in November, in November because that gives four months, so that it gives better timing. I don't know. Well, pres presumably, presumably, you just don't want it to expire and right. die entirely. So you if you three get months three months, months time. you can get well, the you can get the flagging back up, and I can go out and look at it. Yeah. Any time between now and whatever three months from. Yeah. That's, so that's, that's, that should give plenty of time. We've already got the request. It's not, and he has submitted a written request. So okay. we don't we don't have a deadline like oh we have to issue it. It's still be under review. Ah. Right. What I'm saying is like oh the clock ticks when There's the when, like when the yeah. order expires. But no, we have a written request, so we can still. That's the way I would read it too. Work it out. Yeah. yeah. Right. All right. So that so that's what I'm saying. Typically, so the request say, is in. Time, you, so he yeah, needs the request is in time. So typically, okay. So the commission can get a sense of what's happening. Just hang, re, re, re put up the flags, and then have you guys say, yeah, they're all, they they where they're supposed to be, or no, I have to move a flag or something. Right. You know, and then we would basically. So if, since if, the request if he's is in, the flag, since the request we, is in formally, <laughs> it won't expire. Is what you're suggesting. Right. 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 Okay. Yeah, the written request is in, so it would be under review. Yeah. Okay. We, we don't have we don't have to so, issue know, the extension permit before the other one expires. But the no, funny no, thing no. is, your we're bylaw doesn't. Your regulations don't are relative to orders of conditions. Not there's no, there's no silent. There's it silent. Uh, no, it's silent under the act. Is it silent under the act? Too? Okay. Yeah, but it's, one not, of them. it's not silent under the regs. It talks about it. Oh, so okay, so why don't extension both, permits both ex and permits are defined as yeah, ORAP. So, so both yeah. extension requests are in, so we meet the criteria. It's been formally accepted by the commission, so that gives you time to go out and for the, re flag it. For number one, for HCC 28, and then HCC RDA 2016 12 is different. Right, it's a separate it's an extension request for the termination of applicability. So, under the Act, the there is no provision for issuing an extension permit. DEP doesn't have a form for issuing an extension permit. <laughs> so is that? That one dies. And do we, we have? Don't, we don't have a vehicle to extend we, it. Do we have the? Uh, we mean we don't have any, a vehicle to extend it. 
because it's under the Wetlands Protection Act. If you read, we have to you read the act, and you read the regulations. It yes, doesn't sir. say. It does. The only the only language is for extending ORADs and and, and orders and conditions, and they have. A, they have oh, a form. I, I, I get it. They have a I, form I to issue saying. an extension permit for an ORAD. So the or RDA order and they don't have can't a be WP. extended. Yeah, they yeah, yeah they don't have a form to fill it out. Oh, here's your extension permit gotcha. for your RDA. There's no language that provides the commission the ability to extend it. Right. So when that terminates, then a new RDA is going to have to be filed. Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, so the extension request is in for the resource area delineation. Okay. Right. Um, so you, you can will. just have that flagged, and then we can have Matt take a look at it, okay. make sure everything's okay, and then okay. we can extend it for the three years once that's um, done. The RDA under the Act. I'll check onto that. I, I, Something that doesn't sound right with that. I mean, you yeah, if you can find right. it, you can find it. You may be right, but it, maybe it's maybe it doesn't expire. Maybe it's just there in perpetuity. Mm, uh, I think you read the permit. Go it's good. I think it says it's good it's for three, three years. Oh, is that what it says? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Well, Very thank good. you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Don. I misinterpreted what you were uh, what you were saying. No, it's there. very confusing. Yeah. Okay, discuss encroachment issues and possibility of coordinating town certificates of occupancy and compliance. So I asked that to be included on the agenda. Okay. I have to uh, remember all the specifics. <laughs> so, uh, with respect to encroachments, um, uh, Halt came to me, Barry, uh, Barry from Halt came to me. I've been talking to him about encroachments on CR land. This is with respect to encroachments on CR land, uh, uh, regardless of who holds this, the CR. Um, there's a lot of places, and we've seen this, I think, in some areas where people have not known and have extended their lawn and, right, la di da la di da right? Mm -hmm. So we see, he's seen a lot of encroachments of people's uh, backyards um, and uh, clippings and, you know, brush and leaves and so forth. Uh, even at the school, even at the Hopkins School, on the the uh, edge of the, you know where the trail goes through, mm -hmm. it goes from right to school. Yep. There's like a fairly good size and growing pile of clippings from, I guess, the the facilities mowing the lawn. Yeah. So there's that. So there's that kind of you know minimal, but there's also big encroachments going on. So in any event. Um, we seem to have an issue with, or we, we see this issue where where a second buyer, a third buyer, whatever it is, a subsequent buyer, even the new buyers up at Legacy Farms are unaware of what the boundary is, not only between their property and the abutting property, but their property and property that's protected by CR. We seem to have, we don't know that a person's basically even gotten a, as a CO on an application until they come in for a certificate of compliance, which sometimes happens I don't know, on average five years, I'll say, before they come in for, for a certificate of compliance. So what I was wondering is the building inspector, uh, I understand that, you know, he's not, he, he concerns himself with the building code. So he issues a certificate of occupancy based on that, regardless of what our status is. I'm wondering if there's a way that we can be notified when he issues a, uh, a CO so that we might be able to inspect um, see what the progress is relative to the uh, the order um, and, um, and instruct the new people or whoever's living there about the boundary the, with the CR, the boundary with any land that we've had, a you know, that's been under a permit. So I don't know if that's possible. Um, and then, of course, if it is possible, it would be up to, I guess, Don and... <laughs> Uh, and I'd be willing to do some walkthroughs, but we, you know, it'd be a point where we can see what they're doing, how far away they're from finishing their work, and talk to whoever owns the property at that point about getting a certificate of compliance <clears throat> and posting, or, or respecting posting, let's say, right? And I think maybe we still need to talk to maybe some developers, uh, large anyway, about them letting their buyers know about the limits of work and them putting up the medallions or the PIBs or whatever it is that they're meant to put up 
because they may not, you know, a lot of times developers don't do that until the very end, until they sell the very last house. They'll then come around and do that stuff. And if we allow that to happen, we're going to just keep getting people who are coming and saying, oh, I didn't know my backyard ended there. You know, the HOA told me I could do whatever I wanted or whatever it is. So if we get the developers, once they're done developing the land that is now being built upon, uh, to do some, make sure this, the flagging is accurate, it's recorded, and, uh, and have them do something more permanent to show the buyers of what may not even be a finished landscape project, right? Sometimes people buy a house, it's not even land, it's not no lawn or anything. But to be able to let, you know, to have the developers mark out permanently the boundaries so whoever buys it at whatever stage knows it's there. No, no. You guys did revise the, you wanted a new condition that the PIV shall be installed prior to the issuance of a yeah. CO, you know, certificate of actually by the, by the building. How does that, how does, uh, how does that happen? Does, does, um, do they, um, Chuck. Right. He issues. Chuck knows that. So how do we get that information? How do we know that that's done? Chuck doesn't know that. So no, no, right now nobody knows. Well, the applicant, the builder. It's incumbent on whoever pulls on, the seal. But I'll state. bet you that I don't the know. order conditions. I'll put money on 99 out of 100 uh, percent of the uh, folks respect that. I mean, I don't know. It seems like it happens all the time. That's not being done. But and we, we just we, added that in from a couple few meetings ago. So that's right. new. Yeah, that is new. And we've pointed it out specifically to whoever we know, right? Yeah, it was the um, look. Here's a new It was condition. the Pulte issue that mm -hmm. okay. we changed. Right, 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 right. That homeowner. So there are there are folks who have orders that don't have that in it. Yeah. Well, they have these Currently, go back. Yes. This goes back eons, sixty two. The PIB. Yes. You know. Then you guys wanted to so, clarify when it goes in, so we clarify that, and so it's not an ongoing condition. We put it outside. From the point until there's a uh, until there's a request for uh, COC, we don't know to go and see whether that's been done, right? So we only know to see that if the COC has been applied. So for. maybe we can. This is just the uh, I'm throwing this out there. Maybe we expound on that to include if the um, occupancy permit is issued before the COC, the Conservation Commission shall be notified. That way there, that gives us the opportunity to go out to make sure that the builder, you know, to see what he's doing and to... You word it... So the builder once they, is once responsible. The, once the COOC, COO is issued, it's kind of a little late. It should be more through the, when they apply for the COO, right? But well, what I'm saying is, it, no, I, I what mean, I'm saying, Don, is. Occupancy is a phone call and you can get it within two hours. I mean, okay, all right. There's no. There's no way to regulate that. No, the only thing I was thinking is that, um, so I create a spreadsheet every month of all the, everything that's closed out for the entire month. So new, new construction loops, everything. Um, so it's, I have an automatic distribution list on it. I can add Don to that automatic the problem is the staffing to follow up on that list. Right. Um, that's is where it, the, is that's it, the challenge. How, 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 um, how large is the monthly inventory? How it many? depends on the month. I mean, so for what, new occupancy, not that many, but it's it's a full spreadsheet. So I create four spreadsheets a month. Um, all the permits issued for the month, all the permits and legacy issued for the month, all the permits closed and legacy for the month, and all the permits closed in the whole rest of the town. So. I have four spreadsheets that go out every month to, you know, a handful of people that request it. Um, but on like the new occupancy, it's going to tell you um, the address and it's going to tell you the new buyers' names, so we at least have the contact for the, the current owners. That necessarily well, right? Okay. Right, right. You know, I think it'll that's say who the permit was issued to. So typically, that's the builder who got the, you know, the order of conditions, and then it will say, you know, who the buyer. Is. Well, this seems like a good yeah. like, first step. I mean, you like. But what does happen? Don will have to open it up, and then the addresses because. I mean, but it could be so five, Top ten, ones. fifty a month, a couple. Yeah, I mean, probably. Probably thirty or forty, right? And of those, what? Of those, 
it's of those, only a subset of those are have a permit, right? permit, right? Yeah. From us, roof, you know, oh, uh, a new sink. Uh, oh, no, right, 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 right. Uh, I'm talking about like, I'm talking in, about in, in whole buildings, but out of our jurisdiction, right? We've only issued permits on, you know, whatever it is, half yeah, of the I mean, a lot of buildings in town. Be your jurisdiction. Uh, can, so. Is it easy to sort, or is it possible to sort out only the ones that are that we have that have an NOI? No, it's not okay. No, our best bet is that Don is so familiar looking at these that the address yeah, is kind of gonna, it's, it's still going to take <laughs> even him. It's going to take. I know, but that's the best. <laughs> that's the best we got. You remember things from twenty years ago. Well, I don't. I mean, I, my intent that's is certainly best. not to not to further burden Don because I know he's got a lot to do and he handles a lot. So we don't want to do that. So through through. Yeah. a law is written that it's. Well, I have another. I have another another question. That <laughs> I guess they know I can't handle so, it. So so Anna speaking. <laughs> yeah. I've issued 368 certificates of compliance and certificates of occupancy already this year. Yikes. Wow. Wait a minute. COCs and, and COs? Yeah. But oh, you may have an order of conditions that's an addition, not necessarily a new house. Right. We have pools for order of conditions. Yeah. We have, right, right, right. There's also order of conditions that don't require building permits. Mm -hmm. So we, at that point, when somebody comes in for the pool or the addition, then we get to see, first of all, if they have a certificate of compliance, and secondly, then we get to see what the actual yeah, conditions the are. Did they already encroach? Did they already go beyond, right? You know what I mean? So that's a good like, review point. We also issue order conditions for lawn expansion that they don't need a building permit, so I'd never know about it. Right. We're not, yeah, there's sort of some that are going to fall through the cracks. Yeah, I think what we have there is a good first step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll see about that. Yeah, I agree. Um, Can we let, There's so, only been 621 building permits issued, too, this year, if anybody has any curiosity about that. Yeah, if town meeting. That's what I was getting at. I, it's just a little so your yeah. town meeting vote could have had, what was it, three per year or something like that? Yeah, legacy wasn't included as that, though. Okay, so we've added this new condition. The, the, uh, I can't see the number. Can we, have we notified, have we sent that out or alerted, say, people who already have, at least by builder, right? So legacy farms. We've done so this in Pulte and that whoever. Have we done that? Yeah, it doesn't go back yeah. to so the hundreds really. we've okay. issued. All right. It's just then, going forward whenever we put that in. All right, so then the last thing is I wonder if planning board, if beta can help, because I, I don't know the answer to this. Does beta do any progress uh, reviews, inspections, uh, site visits? They don't do anything, right? On subdivisions and site plans. Right. They do. I mean, we do. If they get yeah, contracted. We'll, we'll try and keep an eye well, do, on the too. Do they we, now routinely do that? So yeah, is somebody not on a, a standard single family. No, but like a legacy. Yeah, right. I mean, at this point, legacy projects. is probably the biggest yeah, thing. Yeah, that's out there. Yeah, the bigger ones, you know. So. But these little small ones, pools and blah, blah, blah. And do they report to us or do they, do big they re record big anything ones. about what the status of something like a PIB is? No. No, because we don't require it. We didn't require it. We don't ask them to do it. We don't require them to do it. Right. Right? Is it possible if beta is doing progress or whatever the review is, the site visit, is it possible for them to also no. look and see whether this has been? No, we, we they, I mean. All right, okay. I'm just saying, yeah, yeah. Plan, they, they're out in the field for planning board. Matt's out in the field for, for orders. Okay. And me. All right, so that all sounds good. So then with respect to, big stuff. with respect to specific encroachments, we'll let you know. You, yeah, okay. All right, yeah. cool. Halt will let them know, you mean? Or halt or a commission member or somebody in, you know, yeah, so there's, there's, sees there's something. something. And if something gets encroached. See something, say something. When they, when they, when they, and when they go to get the certificate of compliance and they went beyond, you guys, by having even this, because, they, yeah. you know, Pulte was like, well, we didn't know when we had to. Well, the, I, I just don't want to wait that long because, right. again, we see them years. So now, I mean, basically. Several you still have the ability to Owners say, no, get all that stuff out. Right, but isn't know? there a condition that says that they're supposed to file a certificate of compliance within, within 30 six days. months? Yeah, so within, it's already in there. People within, just thir don't do it. within 30 days. Well, that's exactly right. There the, the, and that was that an was enforcement the, issue. Is that was part of the yeah. problem with Pulte. We were saying, they were like, oh, we didn't sit one of the PIB, but we're like, but when the project was finished, probably when you were going for the COO, that's when you should have been applying to us. You waited like three years. Right. You right. know? I mean, so is so it's an enforcement yeah. thing. Yeah. And it's there, have, but nobody's following right. it. Right. And we don't have anything. the staff to enforce it. No, and I get you, that. And you guys didn't I have, I don't think you were looking to issue fines for them. Do we tweet? Do you tweet? 
Does the Khan Khan tweet? What is the shame tweet? I don't know. I don't, tweet I don't, I don't tweet that we're <laughs> concerned about this. I, 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 I email and I phone. I got a Twitter account, but I've only tweeted once. Do I don't, I don't raid a town uh, no. smartphone. You don't want me to Twitter account. Exactly. You don't want me tweet. Dinosaur. Trust me. Dinosaur. All right, so hopefully this no, you just don't part of the this. problem, and then we'll do the other right, ones we'll do on a case by case basis as the commission becomes aware. All right, I got I got a question. Well, I wore that out. Do you um, for yeah. encroachments if somebody else reported? Do you get those click fix things? Did anything come to you, conservation? Oh yeah, huh? What's click fix? Well, I have no idea. No, what you no? Just said. okay. So you get <laughs> click fix. Do you get anything from that thing? No, uh, it just goes to deep dive. They fix potholes with that thing. Where? Where? Where is this <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so there's no. this. Um, there's this. Yeah, oh, okay. it's a, it's like to to um, it's an online app. It's an online thing. and It's an app. It's called C Click Fix. It's you know whatever. Somebody purchased it, but you can report um, non-emergency like work orders and things like that. I did potholes. You take a picture of a pothole. You send it in. Then is it goes. Is this just a town thing? Yeah, it's a town thing, and it will go to DPW, and they come out and they fix oh, potholes. Really DPW. Popular yeah, oh, okay. I did it for so I guess the DPW, but like depending on which yeah. town, they can Who's have like several. Click fix. Yeah, it's called C Click Fix. I think it's on our website. C as in S E E. I know there's so about it's a 10 way to potholes that I want to report. No, yeah, no. really. So, but it's a way for <laughs> like right, um, if somebody sees something that they can, like you said, see say something because a lot of times you don't know who to call. It gets sent to this place and then they distribute it theoretically to the correct town department. But you know, conservation would only be if like somebody sees well. He'd be using it all the time. Be like, there's erosion going on here. <laughs> is it anonymous? They still get the phone calls. It, it can anonymous? be anonymous, yeah. I think. Or well, that way you don't get, what's it called when you get kicked off Twitter? I believe it can be anonymous, right. or you might have to like log in, but it also you can help, it helps you better. track like a worker. Especially if you're a neighbor. You don't want your neighbor. Retweet well, you don't want the, the highway to know that you're the guy who sent 400 people. Sometimes they don't take a video of anonymous. They won't recognize yeah. anonymous. Yeah, just, it, I just take pictures and I send it to Mike or John. Well, today I stop in and say, hey, I just went by this big pothole on Winter Street. Yeah, potholes, oh, a sign's broken, like a stop sign fell down, something like that. Like, stuff like well, that. there never was a stop sign? No, no, that would be different. All right. <laughs> this is just for fixing little things. But an encroachment well, thing could be something. something. Do that. Jim, can you look into that for us? See if that can be or wrapped into the. Uh, yeah. What am I looking into? <laughs> With this. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, about. absolutely. Absolutely. If it makes sense and if it's efficient. We don't want Don getting 500 emails. Right. Yeah, no, no. That there's potholes in town. Or... I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> okay. So the um, consultant <laughs> agreement renewal for Lucas right. Environmental, it's pretty straightforward. They're just really changing the terms the this year. Yeah, so it's the exact same. Same fee. So uh, from last year, it's just covering from July I guess Matt's doing an okay job. Yeah, so. <laughs> Thanks, you <laughs> get that writing? <laughs> so if I can get a uh, motion to um, approve the Fiscal year 2020 so consultant so agreement for Lucas so and Wino. And a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. And then the last item on the work session was the heritage property. So we got the second laboratory report in. Just got it today. So I'll email that out to you guys. Yeah. And you know, you guys can take a look at it. And if you got any. And plus, I want to run it by Sean. And um, I know Beta made some comments through planning board. So I copied. Um, John, uh, principal planner, and Bader on that email that uh, yeah. Peter Beam has forwarded. So yeah, I looked at it. Um, I mean, yeah. there was some, there were some of the chemicals, the target chemicals detected, but they were th below the DEP thresholds, uh, based on my review. So the trace concentrations essentially, but they don't pose a hazard to human health and the environment. So. Okay, I think we should be in good shape. We should get the board health to take a look at it too. Right. Okay, anything else? So I'm going to motion to uh, close the meeting. So moved. And a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So someplace here. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know.